Today, the greatest risk of global catastrophe doesn't look like this. Instead, it looks like this. If anything kills over 10 million people in the next few decades, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus rather than a war. Not missiles, but microbes. Now, part of the reason for this is that we have invested a huge amount in nuclear deterrence, but we've actually invested very little in a system to stop an epidemic. We're not ready for the next epidemic.、Uh, you can have a virus where people feel well enough while they're infectious that they get on a plane or they go to a market. The source of the virus could be a natural epidemic like Ebola, or it could be bioterrorism. And so there are things that would literally make things a thousand times worse. In fact, let's look at a model of a virus、uh, spread through the air,、uh, like the Spanish flu、uh, back in 1918. So here's what would happen: it would spread throughout the world very, very quickly, and you can see there's over 30 million people die from that epidemic. So this is a serious problem. We should be concerned. But in fact, we can build a really good response system. We have the benefits of all the science and technology that we talk about here. We've got cell phones to get information from the public and get information out to them. We have satellite maps where we can see where people are and where they're moving. We have advances in biology that should dramatically change the turnaround time to look at a pathogen and be able to make drugs and vaccines that fit for that、uh, pathogen. So we can have tools, but those tools need to be put into an overall global health system, and we need preparedness. The best lessons, I think, on how to get prepared are again what we do for war. For soldiers, we have full time、uh, waiting to go. We have reserves that can scale us up to large numbers.、Uh, NATO has a mobile unit that can deploy very rapidly. NATO does a lot of war games to check are people well trained. Do they understand about fuel and logistics and the same radio frequencies? So they are absolutely ready to go. So those are the kinds of things we need to deal with an epidemic.、Uh, what are the key pieces?、Uh, first is we need strong health systems in poor countries.、Uh, that's where、uh, mothers can give birth safely, kids can get all their vaccines, but also where we'll see the outbreak very early on. We need a medical reserve corps. Lots of people who've got the training and background who are ready to go with the expertise, and then we need to pair those medical people with the military, taking advantage of the military's ability to move fast, do logistics, and secure areas. We need to do simulations, germ games, not war games, so that we see where the holes are. The last time a germ game was done in the United States was back in 2001. And it didn't go so well. So far, the score is germs one, people zero. Finally, we need lots of advanced R and D in areas of vaccines and diagnostics. There are some big breakthroughs, like the Dino-associated virus, that could work very, very quickly. Now, I don't have an exact budget for what this would cost, but I'm quite sure it's very modest compared to the potential harm. The World Bank estimates that if we have a worldwide flu epidemic, global wealth will go down by over three trillion dollars, and we'd have millions and millions of deaths. These investments offer significant benefits beyond just being ready for the epidemic.、Uh, the primary health care, the R&D, those things would reduce global health equity and make、uh, the world more just as well as more safe. So I think this should absolutely be a priority. There's no need to panic. We don't have to hoard cans of spaghetti or go down into the basement, but we need to get going because time is not on our side. In fact, if there's one positive thing that can come out of the Ebola epidemic, it's that it can serve as a early warning, a wake-up call to get ready. If we start now, we can be ready for the next epidemic. Thank you.